What is going on, everybody? So I'm back today to talk about a film that I was highly anticipating for this year, and that is Orphan First Kill. I was a big fan of the original Orphan. I still actually haven't gone back and rewatched it since I watched the new one, but oh my god, I was super hyped about this, and I was hoping it would live up to my expectations, and it 100 percent did this movie was wild it was over the top it was campy it was so much fun it felt like something out of like the late 80s it was just a great time and i look forward to talking about it in my review Orphan First Kill is directed by William Brent Bell. After escaping from an Estonian psychiatric facility, Lena Klammer travels to America by impersonating Esther, the missing daughter of a wealthy family. But when her mask starts to slip, she is put against a mother who will protect her family from the murderous child at any cost. So if you've seen the original Orphan film, obviously the twist in the film is that the young girl Esther is actually a 30-year-old girl who has this condition that she can't age. She doesn't look like she's getting any older. Older, and she's manipulating this family and I remember seeing this in the theater when it was released and just being like holy shit this is insane and so much fun and so when they announced that they were doing a prequel film to this I'm like okay what kind of direction are they gonna take so the film opens where we're in the psychiatric Institute there's this young woman who's being trained to work in the art department and we're introduced to Lena who we all know as Esther from the last film who they say is like the most dangerous patient and all this she ends up breaking out and going to America and and what she does which I thought was really clever is she goes on the internet she starts searching and she finds these missing persons photos and she finds one missing persons photo a girl who looks exactly like her or at least close enough that she thinks after the length of time that she's been missing that she'll be able to kind of guise herself as this person so she goes to America the police are like shocked that she showed up and she gets with this family, the father, Alan, and the mother, Trisha, who Trisha is played by Julia Stiles, and their young son, Gunner, who is probably the douchiest character I've ever seen in a movie. And they get introduced, and the father, Alan, is this uh, artist, and he paints these portraits, and Esther starts connecting with him. She ends up seemingly starting to fall in love with him because of his talent, and he's seemingly this really wholehearted and great individual. And what we learn is, not everything about Julia Stiles' character and their son is all it's cracked up to be. And this movie is a campy, over-the-top, fun ride. It's not a masterpiece. It's not the greatest horror film ever made. But what it is is... It's a studio that recognized we can't make the same movie again. So they make you think they're gonna make the same movie again, and then after about a half hour, they completely flip the script on you to where they're like, no, this is not gonna be the same kind of movie. And I respect the hell out of them for it. It was so much fun and so much better than I could have ever expected. Isabel Furman, who plays Lena or Esther, she is just such an incredibly talented actress who everything I've seen her in recently, she's amazing. And at first it's kind of jarring when you see her playing this young girl again because obviously they're using uh, um, trick methods on you as the viewer where, where they'll have a stand-in stunt double from behind her and she's talking to a character because of the size differentiation. And then there's like a, there's a lot of different tricks that they'll pull as filmmakers and at first it took me out of it a little bit. I was like, okay, this is kind of hokey. But as the film kind of starts to draw you in, you really care less and less about it the further that it goes on. And I think that her character is so menacing and evil that she does such a great job. But what I like is this movie flips the script on you to where you're actually rooting for her at periods of time. And I thought that was a really cool subversion of the original film. Julia Stiles is camping it up to the extreme in this movie, especially when the plot to this happens she's just really over the top and absurd I really had fun seeing her in this really the third act is what blows this film just completely out of proportion to where I was on the edge of my seat like what the hell is going to happen and I don't want to talk too much about spoilers because there's so much fun stuff that happens in this film but I love how creative they get with the Lena character and the ways that she manipulates people they introduce this cop character who's constantly around the house and he's like not everything seems like what it's supposed to be over here and I'm gonna investigate deeper and it was so cheesy and schlocky and I just had so much fun watching it and by the end of this movie I just had a huge smile on my face and was like this is exactly what I want 
from a movie like this. I don't expect it to be anything more. I just expect it to be that. My one qualm with this movie, and somebody on Letterboxd said it, and it cracked me the fuck up, is the whole movie looks like it was shot with, like, Vaseline smeared on the lens. It's a really ugly-looking look. I feel like... I watched uh, The Prowler recently, the 1980s slasher film, and it had a similar, like, haze in a lot of the shots, where I'm like, who the fuck thinks that this is a really intelligent, artistic decision? And that bugged me a little bit, but the movie is so much fun and so much schlock that, like, I didn't care. This is exactly what I want from an orphan prequel, and they could make a thousand of these movies. Isabel Furman could be in her 40s, and they could be saying, hey, you're still going to play this kid, and I'll eat, I'll eat it up. It was so much fun. I watched this movie on streaming. I kind of wish I would have seen this in a crowded theater, because I think seeing people's reactions would have been a blast, but this is one that if you have a Paramount Plus subscription, or if you have a theater near you that's showing it, just go watch it. It is such a blast. So have you seen Orphan First Kid? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was a blast. I never would have expected a prequel to a movie from 2009 to be this incredible, and I loved it. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.